But we could talk about the lira, we could talk about Turkey, Erdogan, we could talk about all those issues. Because many of the, the, the heat at the bottom of some of these smoking issues isn't going to go away. But the one question everybody wants to know, if you're a U.S. investor, you were worried on Friday, what should you think today regarding how that in particular emerging market issues should impact your portfolio? Well, I mean, people are looking for safe harbors because all of a sudden, all the things that have been out there to be discussed are now coming to some type of fruition, or as Warren Buffett would say, the tide is starting to come out a little bit, and there are people who are naked there. And they're naked a lot because of Fed policy over the last year. All central bank policy. All central bank policy because people are borrowed up way too much. So now when you get the double hit of an, an, uh, a declining currency that you're paying back in an appreciating currency coupled with rising rates, there's some... Uh, I mean, bad politics play into this, as you pointed out off camera. These things have been festering, especially with regard to Turkey. But at the end of the day, the easy money is reversing, albeit slowly, and all the things that may have happened may just happen a little sooner. It may affect the timeline. Oh, yes, but you know what? And then you start to wonder, is that by design? Because there's a lot of countries here who need some type of relief on certain things. And actually- So the, bring it to a head now. Yeah, the more chaos I mean, in the, the world- I mean, the handwriting is on the wall with respect to the dollar. Most would say over time, it's going to be firming up more. Well, it, it has because the Fed has been in action and they've actually gotten to where, there, where the real yield in the United States on short-term money is probably about zero. We're not effectively at a positive real yield yet, but it's climbing, and that's affected many things, including gold. And you know, now, I while you're talking that. about gold, please put up the chart. Uh, we have a gold chart of the dollar versus the Chinese yuan against gold, and they're divi diverging in, in a massive way. Right. And off camera, you had an explanation. Right. Well, you know, there are two theories about what is because it's a perfect correlation. So, is it due to the Chinese? When the yuan weakens, do the Chinese step back and only become a buyer? Because they've been the biggest buyer, them and the Russian central bank, the Chinese central bank. Do they only buy on an exact relationship between how much the yuan depreciates versus how much gold? And then do they become a buyer? Well, what really jumped out at me is if two big buyers refraining from purchases creates the chart you're looking at on TV, what does that say when central banks don't become buyers about all the other weakened economies that were thriving off the cheap liquidity? It's actually a good synonym for that. Oh, oh, ab ab absolutely. And then the other issue with the Chinese is because the Chinese securitized gold and copper. So a lot of lenders took it as collateral.